So overall, the keycaps cleaned up really well. They were just simply soaked in hot soapy water, uh, kind of stirred around a bit. The water was uh, fresh, hot water was put in. Uh, they you know soaked for another 20 minutes. They were rinsed off and then just kind of wiped off with a paper towel. And I'm very pleased with how they turned out. Didn't do any scrubbing or anything like that. You know they're not perfect, but I don't want to take the patina off. I can see now that there's some slight yellowing going on. No surprise. Bits of UV damage, but I'm not going to deal or I'm not going to try to change that. I'm not going to retro bright or anything. It's just not something to do. I did notice there's a label here. Comerix trademark fast type keyboard. Okay. That's uh, interesting. I've got a brush here. And I'm going to try to work through and brush out as much of this as I can. I'm not going to use any kind of cleaning or solvents down in here. Uh, I just don't see a need for it. We'll just brush out as much of the loose stuff as we can. There's a long hair, I think, being pulled along there. I think it's going to take a smaller brush. Oh, I got one here that's smaller that I can get. Not really. I'm not sure how I'm going to get in between these. Well, certainly not like that. Well, shoot. I've got something here that's longer. This is longer. And I don't expect this to, to clean up and be perfect. You know, you if you watch my channel, you've seen me do really deep teardowns of keyboards, uh, like unsoldering all the keycaps from a PCB kind of stuff. Uh, you know, and completely rebuilding a keyboard. I'm not going to do that here. These are heat staked on, so once they were removed, they would be impossible to get back on in any meaningful way. Uh, I've never seen keycaps like this before, or key bodies like this, I should say. Uh, you know, the mechanism, the whole nine yards, you know, I've just never seen this before. This particular design, it just is what it is. I, I'm sure it would be nearly impossible, potentially, to find replacements. any kind of solvents or anything to clean a lot of the litter uh, has come out just a lot of the loose stuff there's a there's still loose kind of loose dirt and stuff down in between those that I'm just not going to be able to get into none of these brushes are small enough to reach in I don't think I have anything else here I could use. So what came out looks like a lot less material than it looked like there was in there. Which means probably most of it's on my shirt. Actually, I don't want to sit that down on the ribbon cables. So the space bar has not been cleaned because I couldn't get it removed uh, in a way I felt was safe. So I'm going to use a bit of paper towel and a little bit of Windex. And I'm just going to wipe it down, which honestly for most 
nasty keycaps is more than sufficient. It you know it does. Windex does a pretty good job. Uh, it gets used for a lot of stuff. Uh, sorry, I realize I'm doing this off camera. I'm trying to get. in here where I can. Oh yeah, I can definitely see that's better. You can kind of see what's come off there. So I'm very pleased the uh, tape come off the case. Very pleased with that. With that tape residue. just kind of grubby before uh, get all the brushes back in their bag before I lose them these are supposedly anti-static or static dissipative brushes I'm believing that they are so I use them to like dust off printed circuit boards that kind of stuff so actually I probably wanted to keep brushes out so I'm going to do a little bit of brushing inside of the case here so let me just to knock some of the dust and dirt out in there of course this assumes I can get the bag back open to get a brush out trying to knock the stuff that's stuck to the surface off. I don't have an air compressor or any compressed air up here, so I'm just using my breath to kind of knock some of that out. So looking at it from here, I can see that I'm going to want to get in there and clean that. paper towel and Windex. Let me set this out of the way. Yeah, that definitely helped. It was just kind of an accumulated layer of dust and dirt. There's two pieces of plastic here in this with about a three-eighths of an inch gap between them, it looks like. And I'm just using this to kind of wipe down in between them. It was just kind of a layer of dust and grime there. Just, you know, just from years sitting I can see a little white speck here maybe a bit of that glue off the tape residue I'm going to try to knock that one little speck off well, I've got it in the state or some more over here that's probably off camera Ow. So there's some, I had, a minute, had it in the light a minute ago, right in here, I can see some little white speckles down kind of in the finish, and there's a white spot here that I'd like to break loose as well. I think that actually got it. Oh, 
all that alcohol in the cut on my thumb burns. Ow. Oops, then I dropped the screwdriver on the floor. So, that little bit of residue I can see there is gone. There's, continues to be surface stuff. I guess I'm just going to keep cleaning this with the keyboard out of it. So I'm kind of happy I've got it about as far as I can go. There's some white spots over here on the side that I don't know what they are. But this doesn't seem to be breaking loose. Oh, shoot. So actually, it started to remove one of them. Spray paint overflow, you know, overspray or but I'd like that off of there if at all possible. I'm sure I'm completely off camera here. Apologies. I'm trying to remove some little specks of white off the sides of the case. Apologies for being off camera. Uh, that's a little better. So let me sit this back down in place and we'll begin some reassembly and talk about what I've kind of learned here. So there was the two self-tapping screws in these holes here into two spots on the case there and I realize now those were used to position the keyboard. And hold it in position because you can see how much movement there is here. So the challenge for me is going to be refinding those holes. And they were just there to, you know, to position the keyboard, really for nothing else. I, um, do I have a small like a pick? I do. Okay, there it dropped in. I need to prop up this side of it a bit. And just simply there to hold it in alignment. So, oh, that's the screwdriver I need to use. <laughs> that doesn't do me much good. I just need something to wedge up under there that'll actually sit there and hold it up off. The desk so the keyboard's floating. Still lined up. screws are bottoming out in the holes they're turning into is why they weren't turned all the way in. But I don't think they need to be turned all the way in. Now we've got these straps. See, it's an interesting design. I honestly feel like it really cheaped out on the keyboard. I mean, we've found one reference to the kit price of $450 uh, in 1979 or 1979, 80, 
which is about $1,600 today, uh, according to the inflation calculator I used. You'd think for $1,600 in today's money, you would have a stellar keyboard on here. Uh, so that kind of surprises me, and I'm still kind of in sticker shock at that price. It's like, if that's really what they were charging for this, I just can't believe they sold very many of them. Uh, you, you, you know, at, in that, at that age, and you know, or, the, or you know, that year, 1980s, late 70s, early 80s, $1,600 bought an Apple II. about half of these I apologize uh, you don't need to be super tight but tight enough to get the job done uh, set the cleaner the Windex out of the way keycaps over here where I can see them. Set this back in where you can see it. Get my reference photo. Get some of the tools out of the way. And we will begin to put back on keycaps. So the zero backspace Zero looks to be right there. Break key was down here in this corner. X is here. That means B is here. We've got the one without a key cap. I left it off so I could check the orientation against the others. And it's like so. Was there this, was there this much movement? In the entire keyboard assembly before? I don't remember there being. It seems to be wedged up pretty tight. Let's uh, back these out because I can see the warping they're creating. And then we'll rerun them down in. There's a little bit of bow here and here that I can see, and so I'm going to loosen up these outer straps and just kind of let that relax with the center two ones holding everything in alignment. That may have always been bowed from the alignment screws. That's just such a weird way to do that. Those don't need to be super 
tight. These are just so bizarre. You probably see me turning it backwards. I hear it drop into the original thread and then I turn it forward so I'm not cutting new threads every time. Everything there looks good. Definitely cleaner. Not quite as unpleasant to the touch. They were just a little bit gunky before, just a little bit of, you know, not super happy. Uh, I can see a couple. Ow, that burns on my thumb. A couple that just have a little bit of smudge to them still. That I'll just wipe down. You know, this may have got picked up from the work surface here. Like I said, I didn't scrub these beyond just a quick wipe down with a paper towel. This is knocking a little bit more off of them. It's amazing how much alcohol there is in this little pad. certainly see yeah on the eight there was a smudge there are some places where I can really see the yellowing like between this key and the, and the zero the zero nine and the eight seven there's definitely some places where the yellowing is just evident but that's also because I'm looking kind of with a with an eye looking for that kind of detail. The eye key is on upside down. The O key is on upside down. By a keycap puller. It's a real helpful tool. I certainly wouldn't have wanted to type a novel on this keyboard. I've, you know, used a lot of really nice keyboards in my life. The alcohol, of course, has evaporated by now off of these, but just wipe off anything that may have knocked loose. That actually looks better. There was just small smudges in place, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, I guess in a few. I guess the next. Well, I don't know what the next video will be. I'm going to wrap this one up here, and we'll talk soon.